Hi, everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. This episode is about sleep, and that's why I've brought you into my cozy quarters here, because who doesn't like snuggly places to sleep in? All right, listen, sleep. Sleep is so weird. We spend over a third of our lives asleep. Where do we go when we're asleep? How odd is that, that we withdraw our senses and shut down? And it turns out that our brain doesn't shut down. We keep having experiences even when we're asleep. And in those experiences, it's beyond time, beyond space, beyond, quote, so-called reality. I've had dreams where my father shows up and I think, oh, wow, you're alive. And, and then I will have some kind of interaction. And it really feels so real. And I want to say this again. I've said this in prior chapters somewhere. But many people have thought or think that the images in dreams produce the feelings. You know, there's a scary monster chasing you, and that produces fear. But really, I believe that the fear that we carry is the one that produces the scary images. Sleep is really vital to our health, not only our physical health, our mental health as well. Sleep deprivation is really devastating at a body level, mentally deteriorate, hallucinate, dissociate. I mean, it really wreaks havoc on us. You know, you can go longer without food than you can go without sleep. Sleep is broken into several phases. Most of them are non-REM, REM standing for rapid eye movement. The deepest sleep is rapid eye movement sleep. And it is in that stage where we dream. And it is believed that the stage where our brain reorganizes, recategorizes, and somehow tries to make peace with trauma, that's the basis of the EMDR work, which simulates the rapid eye movement of deep sleep while you're consciously remembering or re-experiencing the trauma. And somehow that the belief is that it innately triggers an integrative response to that trauma so that it's not so impactful on our system. Sleep is restorative. We know that the aspect of the nervous system, the central nervous system that dominates during sleep is the parasympathetic branch. That's the part that deals with digestion, rejuvenation, wound healing and healing. So it is important that we have a solid amount of time devoted to good, restful sleep. I'm just saying that if you are not incorporating healthy sleep cycles and sleep into your health regimen, you're really missing out on a major necessity of human optimal functioning. You just are. It's wrong. If you burn the midnight oil, you know, that sort of a thing. Speaking of midnight oil, there was a man, and I write about this in my book, Get Real, Get Well. This man descended into a cave where he lived for three months. The depths of his dwelling in the cave was beyond the reach of any external light. He saw no sunlight, no moonlight. He had electricity sort of piped into him but he was not aware of any of the normal circadian rhythms that people on the surface of the planet were in touch with. The whole thing was to study his experience of time. How does time and light you know, go together? What kind of a sleep and wake cycle would he actually have? In the beginning, I guess just out of habit, he tended to sleep for eight hours and be awake for the rest of the time. I can't say for the rest of the day because there's no day and night down there. Um, but the longer he stayed in there, the more erratic his sleep-wake cycles became. Sometimes uh, he would sleep for 12 hours, wake up for two hours, and then go back to sleep for another 12 hours. And it was erratic. Sometimes he would be up for long periods of time and only sleep short periods of time. Weirdly enough, when he came back to the surface and went through his records and was interviewed, he didn't experience anything weird. He thought he was just going to sleep and slept normally, but he really didn't. 
So there's an intimate connection between sleep, waking, and our experience of light. And obviously, melatonin is a product of the pituitary gland. It's uh, signaled, it's triggered by darkness. And so the melatonin triggers our brain or lets our brain know that it's time to go to sleep. With the absence of light and constant darkness, but nothing but artificial lamp light whenever he felt like it, his whole melatonin cycles were really disrupted. Very weird, wonderful stuff. Also, just, uh, you know, these are some little things that are funny to note. Sleep is part of all functioning of all higher organisms. And that means even insects sleep, fish sleep. Yes, even sharks sleep. Dolphins have a really weird sleep mechanism where they sleep one hemisphere of the brain at a time. So one of their one of their brain hemispheres is turned on all the time. I have this image of dolphins swimming in circles when they're asleep, but I don't I don't think they do. All mammals sleep of mammals. Giraffes are the mammals that sleep the least. Their total sleep in any 24-hour period is about two hours, and they don't do that at a time. They do that in small increments of 10 to 15 minutes. Or the animal that sleeps the most, you ready? It's not a cat, although I think cats are up there. It's a koala bear. They sleep 22 hours a day. Aren't they adorable? So what about humans? How much is the optimal amount of sleep? What do we need? We have Our sleep cycle, a complete sleep cycle that includes REM sleep, lasts about 90 minutes. And we need from three to six of those to have refreshing sleep. If you think of three, three times nine, 90 is 270 divided by six. That's only about four and a half hours. So technically, even though it's advised that we get eight or nine hours of sleep. This other studies show that if you have really complete deep sleep cycles, you can get away with as few as three. You know, six REM cycles, six times nine, 54 divided by 60, that's a good eight hours, eight and a half hours. So that's optimal. Sleep deprivation is one of the main features of torture. If you want to coerce somebody into giving you information, deprive them of sleep. There's a few other little factoids about sleep. Our body temperature, our core body temperature naturally drops when we sleep. Some people say that the coldness facilitates deeper sleep. So there you go. Don't cover yourself with blankets. And basically, electric blankets seem to be a real no-no when it comes to facilitating better sleep. What about napping? It turns out that napping is really healthy. And many studies have shown and agreed that the ideal nap time, are you ready for this? This is important information. The ideal amount of time where a nap is most regenerative, restorative, and restful is 26 minutes. Not 25, 26. So. Oh, yeah, you know what? I wanted to say one more thing about it. Um, insomnia, the having difficulty sleeping, is really, in my opinion, is related to our ability to let go. Sleep is all about letting go. We let go of our senses. Ideally, we let go of our thoughts. Our muscles go into this catatonia where the only muscles that are really at play during healthy sleep is our eye muscles, weirdly enough, our ear muscles, and of course, our, the muscles involved in respiration. So we are so reduced when we sleep. You know, some people have said that if you're able to reduce, to really withdraw your senses and really be so simple, simple, that meditation is like wakeful sleep, that it is just as restorative, just as rejuvenative, and just as restful as deep sleep. So we 
I guess they're saying that you don't have to be unconscious to get that level of rest. That sounds intriguing to me. Okay. Buona notte. Till next time. Bye. Thank you.